where would we be without those first conservation pioneers? What would the landscape look like without the creation of public grasslands and forests, national parks, and national refuges? Where would our wildlife populations be without the restrictions placed on market hunting by the Lacey Act in 1900? Where would we be without pioneers like Forest Service Chief Gifford Pinchot or President Teddy Roosevelt, hunter, naturalist, and conservationist who said, there could be no greater issue than that of conservation in this country? Where would we be? The conservation movement in this country began approximately 120 years ago. This movement was led and founded by individuals who cared deeply about the natural resources of this nation, particularly its wildlife resources. And they also cared deeply about their own traditions of hunting and wilderness experience. In essence, they cared deeply about their country. This is our wildlife heritage. American wildlife conservation is grounded in the belief that wildlife belongs to the people. An idea commonly known as the public trust doctrine. Or the North American model of wildlife conservation. This keystone concept was established by a Supreme Court decision in 1842. Those early pioneers initiated the movement, but it wasn't until the 1930s that modern conservation ideas came into the American mainstream. Habitat had turned to dust, and wildlife continued to be scarce, creating a public outcry for stewardship of the land. It was a generational effort, and it was really that generation of the 1930s that put into place the foundation for what we do now. Across the nation, states began the process of creating professional wildlife management agencies. Obviously, they had the legal responsibility for managing wildlife, but they didn't have all the tools yet. Congress responded, passing landmark wildlife legislation such as the Migratory Bird Hunting Stamp in 1934 to fund national wildlife refuges and the Pittman-Robertson Act in 1937. Pittman-Robertson Act provided funding for the state fish and game uh, agencies. It set up a way to uh, taxing the sale of uh, ammunition and hunting supplies. Idaho and Frank Robertson is the nephew of Willis Robertson, a congressman from Virginia who had been a state legislator and a fish and game commissioner. He surely understood the problems and in his love, for his conservation, love for conservation and his love for hunting, made him want to do something for it, do something about it. And I think that it, 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 that drive is what pushed him, and I guess he found enough fellow representatives and to, to make it happen. With this new legislation, a new discipline of professional wildlife biology evolved. At the forefront was Aldo Leopold. In 1933, he was appointed chair of the nation's first game management department at the University of Wisconsin. He was particularly and keenly interested in the role of government. What is its responsibility and how can it help its public? How can we help our fellow citizens to share this sense of an ethical uh, commitment to conservation? And so the role of the state agencies was especially important. Everything was new. Up until the 1930s, most state agencies consisted of mainly game wardens who were often political appointees. As professional wildlife agencies were established, Leopold's ideas and concepts influenced how these new agencies functioned. You had to have a solid foundation in scientific information and research and monitoring so that you could make the best informed decisions possible especially as science evolves. He was also really committed to public participation, to involving the citizens as much as possible in the decision-making process and to make them share in this obligation and responsibility of, of sustaining the natural world. This was one of Leopold's fundamental concepts, the land ethic, the idea that we as a society care about people and land and the connections between them. The people of Idaho listened, and in 1938, acted by overwhelmingly passing Idaho's first citizens' initiative, creating a five-member Fish and Game Commission. A new era of professional wildlife management was launched. If you get people together to work together toward a goal of restoration, 
and resilience in the land, that all of a sudden they will understand that what connects them is a lot stronger than what divides them. The mission statement of the Idaho Department of Fish and Game is officially part of Idaho Code, Section 36103, and this is who we are. All wildlife, all wildlife, including all wild animals, wild birds, and fish within the state of Idaho, is hereby declared to be the property of the state of Idaho. It shall be preserved, protected, perpetuated, and managed. It shall be only captured or taken at such times or places, under such conditions and by such means, or in such manner as will preserve, protect, and perpetuate such wildlife, and provide for the citizens of this state, and as by law permitted to others, continued supplies of such wildlife for hunting, fishing, and trapping. To help fulfill our mission, we have created a strategic plan, the compass. This is our vision. Idaho Department of Fish and Game shall work with the citizens of Idaho in providing abundant, diverse fish and wildlife. And ensuring a rich outdoor heritage for all generations. Where would we be without those first conservation pioneers? And what will be our legacy? So it's up to all of us, I think, to reclaim that tradition and that sense of responsibility. Um, we're the ones who are going to have to take the leadership on this and, and show the way forward. Aldo Leopold writes in his book Round River of his hope that a wildlife legacy be preserved to pass on to his three sons. He writes, I hope to leave them good health and education and possibly even a competence. But what are they going to do with these things if there be no more deer in the hills and no more quail in the coverts? No more snipe whistling in the meadow. No more piping of widgeons and chattering of teal as darkness covers the marshes. No more whistling of swift wings when the morning star pales in the east. And when the dawn wind stirs through the ancient cottonwoods and the gray light steals down from the hills over the old river, sliding softly past its wide brown sandbars, what if there be no more goose music? Aldo Leopold's legacy remains alive in us and in the wonder of Idaho, a magical place where the music can still be heard. <laughs>